Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to the Mayhem Morning Minute. I hope you guys are doing well wherever you are here in Central Tennessee. Kind of sort of East Tennessee. How about that hair, guys? It is cold. Cold, cold, cold. We have fog condensing on uh, the pine trees making the needles frozen white. Very pretty. Not too bad yet. Uh, if it accumulates enough, then you have uh, a problem because the tree limbs get heavy and they drop oops, onto the power lines uh, up here uh, for the residents. Uh, I'm up here in Etowah. We're heading back down now to uh, Chattanooga. Going to do some work. Uh, it's going to be kind of a, one of my out-of-town weeks. I have one of those every month, and this is it. But wanted to kind of touch base with you guys as to what all's going on and what's happening. Um, as a lot of you know, Parlor has been shut down. It was a social media site, uh, an alternative to Facebook. And the powers that be, uh, being Amazon and Apple, uh, and, and ultimately those, uh, got together and they decided that the problem that had come from uh, the Capitol DC protests was because of Parler. Now that I find that very interesting, I was on Parler, and uh, it was very good. They called it, it, it a a hate speech website or group or social media. It was not. Um, they actually did have restrictions, so you could not say certain things and there was nothing like that that was posted so there is that lie now there is another lie that is saying that parlor was used to orchestrate and coordinate with groups to assemble and protest and kind of, sort of, not really. If you were to go after Parler for what was done at the Capitol, you would more than likely need to go after AT&T or Verizon because a lot more communications were made regarding those protests and orchestrating and organizing through messaging, text messaging, and cell phone conversations than there were done on Parlor. Now, enough of that. Parlor is no more for the moment. They are looking and they have been effectively castrated by their competition, which was the ultimate goal. The way it is, and who does this affect? Well, it absolutely affects the employees at Parlor, and that's really what I wanted to talk to you about. We have just recently talked about building resiliency in your life and setting things up to where there were other sources of income. How much more resilient would the people from Parlor have been if they had a couple of months of income set aside? Who knows? Maybe they did. Or if they had a month's worth of groceries set aside, or 
if they had some side hustles, a couple of extra streams of income. Let's take this travesty and catastrophe that happened to Parler and let's use it to reinforce and bolster what we are doing. What happened was terrible and should not have happened and basically it was a monopoly holding on to their monopoly. That's why all this happened. It had nothing to do with politics or anything like that. And it's just the way it was. Uh, you can research it and you can find out. Please fact check me. That is what was happening. That is why things happened the way they did. Now, again, what can we do? What can we take away from this? This was horrible. Uh, people had their lives ruined because of this. Okay, that's terrible. What can we take away from it? Build resiliency. Multiple streams of income in your life. Have emergency savings set aside. Have a stockpile of food. and medications set aside for emergencies. If you do that, that goes a long way to lessening their control. If I want to control you, I'm going to restrict your access to information. I'm also going to control your resources. I'm also going to control your income. Holy cow. Look at what I just did. Exactly. Take what happened to Parlor and use it as a lesson to protect yourself. There are forces at work that are attempting to muzzle you and to domesticate you. I can't say it any different than that. That is what is happening. Now, I know no, some of you are going to say, oh, well, Darren, that's... Uh, a lot of doom and gloom there and you're doing this and that. No, okay. Um, I want the best for each and every one of you. I hope you would listen to what I have to say. If you don't, it won't affect me. My family will continue to be taken care of in the way that I have set aside things for them to be taken care of. And I want you to do that for your family. Not trying to sell you nothing. Not trying to get you to buy these vitamins or whatever kind of crap that these other people are doing. This is just me talking to you. Trying to help you come up with something. And why should I do that? Why should I try to help people come up with an alternative to uh, what's going on, something that gives them confidence and boasts, boosts, I'm sorry, boosts their, uh, their income. Well, if you're relying on yourself, that's one less person that's gonna ultimately rely on me. Now you think about that. Think about 10 people that you know that depend on you. Okay. Those 10 people, if they're taking care of themselves, they don't depend on you as much. 
and other people can be brought on board. I don't know, guys. It seems that there are some strange things that are coming and we are headed in a very frightening direction. What do I suggest? Darren, what would you do? What would you tell us to do? I'm glad you asked. First thing I would tell you to do, pay off your debt. Whatever kind of debt you have, reduce it as much as you can and get on a schedule to reduce it even further. Establish and set up some form of resiliency in your life. Be that from side gigs, side hustles, whatever it is you want to call them. Generate you two extra sources of income, even if it's only $100 a month. Having 200 extra dollars a month goes a long way for us some people. For a lot of people, it does. There's so much we can do right now. We still have time to plan and prepare. Another good thing, grow a garden. I talk about that all the time. Grow a garden, grow some vegetables, grow some herbs. Something, anything. That goes a long way, guys. All right, we are at almost 12 or 13 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. There are things that are playing out. That can be problematic and difficult. Keep doing the good things. Keep taking care of your friends and your neighbors, even if they don't like you. Go next door to your neighbor's house, the guy that doesn't like you, that thinks you're an asshole. Yes, I said that. Knock on his door and ask him how he's doing and see if he needs anything. And I'm going to have to do the same thing. Because we all have that one neighbor that you just cringe when you see them drive by because they just annoy you. Alright guys, we're going to wrap it up. Think about what I've said. Comments, thoughts, concerns. Tell me how you are generating an extra income on the side just general nothing too specific I'm going to leave you with this I want the best for each and every one of you take care of you people